Uh, good afternoon, friends. I am Amit. Uh, I am director of engineering at Big Basket. I lead a bunch of engineers uh, which create systems powering supply chain, delivery, logistics, and a bunch of other things. So the topic of today's presentation is how uh, you know Big Basket using technology to achieve minimal error in operations. Uh, and this is a pretty interesting topic. The, the slides are all black and white slides. I, this is engineer, engineering side of things. It's working. Yeah. So last week I completed one year in Big Basket, and what I realized was, uh, uh, you know, supply chain, uh, uh, supply chain system is really complex. It contains a lot of people, a lot of decision making which is happening, a lot of data is getting generated, and uh, it's it's vast and complicated, and and that goes for the delivery also. And given at the scale at which we work, uh, which is like we are, we have around 70 warehouses. Uh, we are operating 28 cities, round the clock operations. Most times of the day we have delivery. So it further adds to the complications. So, so that is the current state of the nature of operation, you know, uh, in Big Basket. Uh, coming to the software side of things, uh, the, the systems. So these are some of the principles which we use. Uh, you know, we have used to build the systems, which to kind of reduce the errors. So. Uh, while the, the software is the same, but it needs the flexibility uh, so that it allows the warehouse, uh, the individual warehouses of the uh, local area to have the customization which they need actually. So, so we are big on configuration, so a lot of our softwares act actually have a huge degree of configurability, uh, database configurability uh, built into them. Uh, and, and, and the software actually, uh, so there's a bunch of software services which work together to uh, realize this operation. So there's a lot of data movement, there are a lot of calls happening around, uh, and which means that uh, there has to be an inherent retry mechanism built into the software. So software calls will fail once in a while, and so the inherent principle which we use is that, uh, you know, the, the call has to have a back, uh, a retry mechanism, so, so if something gets failed, automatically the software should be able to retry and recover things. Now forecasting is one thing which we do a lot because Big Basket, as we know, we, uh, most of the orders are delivered by the inventory owned by the Big Basket, which means that we already have procured the inventory based on the uh, you know order forecast of the future, and it's not just about the stock inventory, also the uh, the the delivery resources. Like how many vans do we need? Like ten days from now in the morning slot of one specific area of Mumbai, uh, or how many delivery executives are required? So all these things are planned well in advance, and everything is based on the forecasting model. And uh, yeah, so so that's something very critical part of our software systems. Uh, reporting and dashboard we'll cover, we'll see later, but uh, these things are very inherent to the, uh, you know, uh, to the success of our uh, software, which eventually leads to the success of the system. Uh, the last is the, the technical landscape, like we have uh, a bunch of microservices, and the data is not centralized, it is all distributed all over the place, so that's how it is. So let's, uh, yeah, so zero error operation, like, uh, I mean, really are we a zero error operation company? So, so let's step back and let's see. So what does, zero or, uh, what does uh, zero error operation mean actually before we answer, you know? Uh, so so that we can use multiple metrics actually to define that uh, zero error in operation. But one good perspective is uh, how does customer see zero, zero error actually in operation? And two things which come to the mind is if customer has placed an order of like, let's say 10 items in the order, and if we deliver all those 10 items to the customer, and if we deliver it on time, well, we can say that yes, we have not made error in the operation. So, so, so that, that that's the you know that's a good definition to have actually. And uh, so, what are our metrics? Well, I cannot reveal the numbers, but it's very healthy. This is one of the top track metrics uh, by our top management all over the place, and and we track this metric uh, ex extensively on a daily basis, region by region. So, we have a data for like you know uh, uh, let's say in Delhi, certain region, what is the uh, uh, delivery percentage, like you know, how many orders we could not fulfill, or part of order which could not fulfill, and that data we have for uh, all the regions actually, and we measure it. And uh, yeah, so so how does Big Basket do it actually? Yeah, uh, yeah. So no fancy stuff here. Uh, we are not using drones, robots, and things like that. Not yet. Uh, so we we actually fall back on the the, the conventional problem solving, uh, you know, techniques actually. So the whole supply chain operations or the delivery operations, a set of processes. So we look for the areas of inefficiency, and then we kind of go to the first principle. We try to apply the, uh, we try to create a solution to remove the inefficiency, and if technology has to play a part in it, yes, it does play a part. And, uh, and a lot of times when we build the solution, a trade-off has to be taken, 
And we generally, uh, whenever there is a trade-off has to be made, we try to incline, lean on towards the side of the customer. And yeah, data-driven decision making happens all the time. I mean, I am not going. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so in the subsequent slides, we'll talk about. I'll just take you through some of the aspects of our operations and the problems which we have solved that give you a insight into the way we solve the problem. So, minimizing error in the operation actually starts with the, you know, the promise made to the customer. So, so if a customer is going to place an order, right, and if an item is not there, we will not let the order happen. So that is one. And the second thing is, if a customer is placing an order for a particular delivery slot, let's say it wants to place an order for like morning of day after tomorrow, and we do not have the delivery resources to fulfill that order, to, so we are not going to take the order. So, 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 so this is how we, uh, as a technology, we kind of prevent the, you know, uh, the order being placed if we do not have enough resources. And uh, so, so, which means this, that the, the delivery resources for the future, for uh, like 10 days in future, is kind of fed into the system. And every time a customer places an order for a particular slot or a particular day, so the delivery capacity, the, the available resources goes down, actually. And the moment the, the, there are no available resources for a certain day because the orders have already been placed, so that delivery slot is not available to the customer for placing the order. Uh, yeah, inconsistent uh, inventory data. So a lot have been talked about the data today, actually. And uh, because the data exists at multiple places, especially the inventory data starts with the warehouse, actually. And warehouse, there is different system which is managing the warehouse. Uh, a, a lot of items are getting stocked in. Items are being written off. Items, ret returns are happening there. And then there's another system which kind of powers the, uh, the customer view of the inventory, right? And then there are a lot of other systems also. But these two systems primarily has to have the same view. Otherwise, you'll end up you know, end up taking orders for, for an inventory which doesn't actually exist. So I'll tell you, you know, uh, earlier what uh, the, the way we used to work was uh, these two systems would synchronize, uh, you know, at a certain interval. They, they, the, the data would flow both sides to make sure that there's cons uh, consistent view, and that would happen at a regular frequency. But then between that interval, there was a good chance that there will be a disparity, and, and, and then the issues might occur. So what we actually invested a lot of effort here, uh, because this was coming as one of the main source of uh, you know, unfulfilled orders. And we build our own custom inventory data transfer solution, which allows the data movement as soon as changes happen in any side. And even if, even, and this is happening like in, there are thousands of calls are happening all over the place, like within, within an hour actually. And, and suppose some call has failed, then the subsequent call actually will go and correct that data. So, so that is the kind of you know uh, the solution which we have built, which actually reduced the uh, you know uh, uh, the error happening on the ground because of this reason. Uh, yeah. So this is about the picking actually. Uh, so in the in the warehouse, uh, order gets fulfilled by the fulfilled by the pickers, and the way it works is uh, you know a picker is assigned some uh, five to ten orders, and he and earlier the process was that he, uh, he would go around, uh, he will pick items for an order. And then he will go, go to the next order, and like that he will he will complete all his quota of uh, five orders, and then he will place those five orders in a in a place. Actually, uh, so orders are picked either in a crate or a bag. Uh, uh, yeah, so not bad. Uh, uh, but the problem was that suppose three of the orders out of five or ten they contain tomatoes, right? So he is going to the tomato section three times, uh, you know, one for each order. Not a good system. Can it be improved upon? Uh, we thought about it. Uh, we realized that yes. I mean. If we somehow kind of you know group the orders which actually contain let's say tomato, and we, we we give those orders to the picker, maybe he will go to that section tomato section once, and he picks all the orders which contains the tomato together, and that's it actually. But then how many orders will have the exactly same quantity for the same delivery timing? Probably very less, right? So then we said, okay, can we do something better? So what about the aisle thing, right? So 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 we have in a warehouse typically small warehouse, they're like uh, around seven to ten aisles are there. But can we restrict? Can we group the orders containing items belonging to one aisle? And that way, the picker only has to go one aisle, and he will have all the orders which needs to be picked only from that aisle. Yes. So and this actually worked. And uh, when we did this, uh, uh, so it reduced the, the amount of distance the picker has to travel to, to kind of, of uh, pick those orders, as well as it also reduced the time. And this led to uh, you know, uh, increase in his picking efficiency. He was able to pick more orders in the same time. And you know, yeah, so this was good optimization we did. Another one with, uh, uh, on the same lines in the picking was, uh, so, so there was this 
older process where the items which were picked by the pickers, suppose 10 orders he has picked, he will, he will go and place at some place and like, like him there will be like several other pickers, so there will be like 70 orders getting collected at one area ready to be, dis, ready to be you know, uh, picked by the delivery guys. Now, but before that there was a process that uh, somebody will come and he will have, uh, he has to segregate, segregate those 70 orders into various routes because those 70 orders are supposed to go in 5 or 7 different routes. So he will come with a sheet actually which will act, have the map of route and the orders and he will go and segregate those uh, um, crates actually which contain the orders into various routes and then the deliver and put them in the lane actually and the delivery guy will come and do that. So this man, the segregator person was actually taking around 30 minutes of time to do this job as well as occasionally he would do mistakes like he will somehow put orders in wrong routes because this has to be done for every delivery every time, multiple times in a day. So then we thought that uh, can, can something be done here, can take help, uh, you know, uh, us in a way that this, this process is not required, can be eliminated and hence the error can be removed. And we said that, okay, so when the picker is actually picking these orders, can we do, can we actually uh, give him the orders which belong to one route only, so that at the source point itself, when he is picking, let's say, five orders or three orders, they all belong to the same route. And that, and that way then the picker can actually pick the things and he can directly put it in the route lane and, and, and not only we reduce the error, the manual error during the segregation, mapping of the order to the route, but also it will eliminate that whole process itself. So, so the value of the process has been brought up front and, and kind of, uh, you know, technology has been leveraged to uh, uh, reduce the error. So when we did this, this also gave, gave us tremendous uh, benefit actually, uh, yeah, so, uh, this was another experiment. So, so these are some of the things which we have done and, and, and this is how we approach a problem to solve things. Uh, uh, the advantage we have is that we have our own uh, in-house tech actually to, and then we have our own uh, business and operations which work very closely with the tech. So whenever a operations team has a problem, it kind of, uh, we, we look at it, we try to solve it and we see if the value in the tech in solving those problems. Oh yeah, now some of the generic things which, which we do is uh, reports. So reports are extensively used all over the place. Uh, and, and, um, so there are two kinds of reports. One is the re near real-time reports. Uh, so, the, so near real-time reports kind of, they give a view to the, all the operations manager about what is the status of their you know, operations. So for example, if certain things have to be picked or certain things have to be uh, loaded in the van by this time. So the report would actually tell how far they are from the schedule and they take the corrective action before that particular you know, error has actually impacted the customer. So, 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 so this is one way to use those reports. These are near, near real-time reports. Uh, there are dashboard also, uh, which, uh, you know, so one of the dashboard is uh, when all the delivery guys are on the route uh, to deliver to the, uh, on the route to deliver the orders to the customers, we have a centralized dashboard where, you know, a manager can go and see like which of the delivery guys are behind the schedule or where they are, with, where they are with respect to the real time and, and if needed they can call them, they can uh, help them with uh, if they are finding difficulties in uh, locating the address of the customer and things like that. There's another reporting system which is a historical one which is like, you know, which gets generated uh, after a day or two and it provides a feedback loop with respect to the, some of the things which we do. For example, like how many orders were delivered on time, so these are the reports which will help and it will find the, uh, you know, uh, it will give us an efficiency number and, 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 and then it will help us to tweak the operations or it will help us to tweak the, you know, build some solution if needed. Uh, yeah, uh, monitoring alerting, uh, very critical, very important uh, uh, because of, uh, more and more we, we do things in the software, uh, our, uh, as, as I'm saying, so the chance and software, we all know it will fail once in a while and the failure of software will happen some of the, some of the worst times, like it will happen 2 a.m. at night or, uh, and, 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 and some of the things are very critical. For example, a small warehouse, it needs to place an order to, uh, you know, a large warehouse for uh, some, uh, let's say, 500 packets of bread, right? If that order itself has failed, then tomorrow it, that small warehouse is going to find it very difficult. It's not able to meet the customer needs. So, so the alert has to be raised at 12, 2 a.m. whenever that thing fails. And, and that is why in all our critical paths, we have actually built in the alert mechanism. Uh, and then, so, so, the, so the failures, as I said, can be because of the infra or the application can fail, or sometimes the application is fine, but the, the, the business metric fails. So for example, uh, somebody was supposed to enter uh, 50 vans. 50 vans is required for, let's say, on 10th of October, um, uh, whole day. 
and some wrongly somebody entered a five, not fifty, because that is he is entering the feeding the data in the system. Now that five vans would result in very less number of orders for that day, and that would actually trigger an alert that oh, so rest of the day they were having five hundred orders in that area. Suddenly it is like ten orders, so there's something wrong there. Nothing wrong with the software, but wrong with the business metric. And uh, yeah, so when should you alert? Act? So uh, so so uh, so you should you should alert when you are when you are going to approach the failure. So this is the beauty of the software. Software can smell the failure much in advance, much before that customer or the operations guy ever come to know about that failure. So we can leverage that thing. And how should you alert? Yeah, so the multiple channels. You, you can have a call. You can have SMS, uh, email. Depending on the criticality of the functionality, we can actually uh, you know uh, we can uh, yeah. And that this is the last one, I, I, uh, last slide actually. Uh, so this is a manual lever, right? So as uh, so I said, because we are working round the clock, so failures are happening. Yes, people have been alerted. There is a bug in the software. The engineer is working on it. Now the operations cannot actually wait for the bug to be fixed. So there has to be a way for the operations to, uh, you know, to get unblocked and continue. Business has to run as usual. And then these are some of the manual levers which are provided in the software but it needs a manual input so that you know somebody can uh, let that uh, uh, whatever is the use case uh, run uh, while the bug actual rc or the fix is happening yes and it, there are chances that that uh, can be abused so it has to be uh, the access has to be controlled to some key people and then okay i'll skip this because uh, i realize most of us yeah so so yeah so that's all about it so what i realize is that uh, See, the error in operation happens only if the error has reached to the customer. If we can prevent that error early in, early in the cycle, and if we can respond it in time actually to fix it, and customer never knows about it, probably we are, you know, we, yeah, we are in a state where, as if the error never happened. Yeah, that's all from my side. Thanks.